Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Challenge Jimmy. Today's photo is of a canal in Venice taken by Heath Smith. Now the challenge is we have three exposures and the boat is obviously moving. So in all three exposures you can see that the objects are all in a different place. So the buildings are completely misaligned and so is the boat as well. Here's the problem. If you want to align these layers, we can go to Raya Pro and choose Auto Align Layers, or we can select all the layers and go to Edit, Auto Align, and OK. Since there's so much movement in these exposures, Photoshop just can't align the layers. So you can see there's still movement between exposures. So they're still misaligned, even after Photoshop did its best to try and align them for us. So in these situations, what exactly can we do? Well, it is possible just to cut out, using a lasso tool, particular parts of an image. So for example, we could cut around this boat, or we could try and cut around the sky. And once we make that selection, we press Command and J, and so we just have a new layer here, which would just be our sky, or just be the boat, and then we can try and align the layers that way. Because if Photoshop only has to align one small object to our base exposure, like the boat, then it has more flexibility when it comes to warping and changing that object. But that's a slow process and not necessarily a clean one either. Fortunately, in this image, we don't have a hugely contrasting scene. The sky is only a little bit blown out on the base exposure, and the shadows are dark, but these are good quality RAW files with lots of information. So instead of using three exposures, this is one of the scenes where we'll just have to make do with one. And we'll use a technique called triple processing, where we really make the most out of a single RAW file. So I'm going to take this base exposure into Adobe Camera Raw and show you how to do that. So here's the base exposure in Adobe Camera Raw. The first thing I'm going to do is just hold down Shift. And when we do that, you'll see at the bottom here where it says Open Image, it becomes Open Object and I'm going to click on that. And essentially what we're doing is we're making a smart object in Photoshop of this layer. And it means that if we double click on this icon here, we can open up Adobe Camera Raw again. This is important because it means we still have access to that rich raw data in Adobe Camera Raw. It's very different to going to Filter, for example, and Camera Raw Filter. Those are two different things because Adobe Camera Raw Filter doesn't have full access to the RAW file when it's not a smart object. So now we have our base exposure in Photoshop, I'm going to right click on it and choose New Smart Object via Copy. And I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to make the top layer invisible and choose just the middle layer and double click on the icon to bring Adobe Camera Raw up. This is going to be our sky layer, so I'm just going to bring down the highlights and essentially just recover the overexposed areas in the sky. And I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. When all the information is back in the sky, I can just press OK. And now our middle layer has a good level of information in the sky to work with. Next, I make the top layer visible and again go into Adobe Camera Raw. And this time, I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit, not too much and then bring up the shadows. If I'm happy with the results, I can just press OK. Now before we begin blending, you may be wondering why we didn't just use this middle exposure and bring the highlights down and bring the shadows up. Well, that would have given us good results, but doing it this way gives us more control. For example, we're going to use the sky from this darker exposure in the middle and we're going to put it into the sky here, or at least most of it. Then, if we want to apply warmth to the image and just apply it to the sky so it looks a bit more natural, we can apply it just to this layer, so we won't add unnatural warmth to any other part of the image, just to the clouds, which is where the warmth should be. So we're essentially giving ourselves a lot more control. Now to blend these two exposures, I'm going to use a technique we've seen a few times before, and that's apply image and it's very effective. So for the darker exposure, I make the darker exposure invisible because I want to build a mask around the base exposure. 
uh, for Raya Pro users, we just go to Raya Pro and we just choose Dark One because we're working with the darker exposure. When that's done, we can make the darker exposure visible and all of a sudden, we have now recovered our highlights. And look, we're not affecting any other part of the foreground. So if I make the mask invisible, all of a sudden the foreground becomes dark. If I make it visible again, the foreground retains its same level of brightness. Now, as I mentioned before, we can add warmth to the sky here using two different methods. We can use an adjustment layer, let's say a photo filter, and just create a clipping mask, which goes on to this darker exposure, which means it'll only affect this darker exposure. And since much of the sky is coming from the darker exposure, that means we can warm the sky. And you can see we're adding nice warmth to the sky, but not affecting the foreground. And there's the before and after, so it looks quite natural. We can also open up a curves layer and clip that to the darker exposure as well. And that will allow us to brighten up the sky if we want. We don't want to brighten up too much. Or if we want, we can give it a lot of contrast. Like that. So there's the before and after. Now that's far too strong, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity until it looks natural. And there's the before and after for those two little changes. And all of those changes are only applied to the sky. They don't affect the foreground. So that's why it's good to use double or triple processing instead of just pulling up the shadows and pulling down the highlights. An alternative way to add color to the sky and add some contrast to the sky is by deleting these two layers and opening up Adobe Camera Raw again. And this time we can just add some nice warmth and maybe even some gentle pinks as well. And if we want, we can add more local contrast to the clouds just to make them stand out a little bit more. And we do that with just a little clarity kick and press OK. And now our sky has more warmth and local contrast. There's the before and after. Now I still think it's a little bit too dark, so I'm going to create a clipping mask just as before with a curves layer. And I'm just going to bring the sky up just a little bit but we don't want to affect the highlights too much. There we go. Now, to restore the shadows, I'm going to make this brighter exposure visible. I'm going to go to Raya Pro and choose Bright Swan. And now you'll see we've restored information in the shadows. And to show you what it looked like before and after, this is our original image with underexposed areas and some overexposed sky. And this is after a few tweaks using double or triple processing. And now we can continue with our workflow, adding contrast adjustments and whatever else you usually do in your workflow. Now, if you don't have Raya Pro and you haven't seen my previous tutorials, let me show you how to blend these exposures without the panel. I'm just gonna delete these layers. and I'm going to make the brighter exposure invisible. I'm going to make the darker exposure invisible too. I'm going to create a mask on the darker exposure. I'm going to go to image, apply image, and make sure your settings are the same as mine, and just press OK. Now you'll see we've created a mask on this darker exposure. So if we just make that visible, there's the before and after. So we've restored that nice sky. Now I make the brighter exposure visible, create a mask again, go to image, apply image, and this time I'll invert the mask. So we're gonna be targeting just the shadows and not the highlights. Here we have a nice clean image with restored highlights and shadows. And with the scene nicely blended now, we can continue with our workflow just as we normally would. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching.